are in the uh, Old Guard Shield Contest to the Supporters Built Old Guard Shield Contest, and Pittsburgh can win that. Uh, that pits the five longest tenured franchises in the Eastern Conference against each other. Right now they're tied with Rochester with 12 points, one point ahead of Charleston. So there is something on the line here tonight for the Riverhounds. Well, they're not just playing for pride then and trying to put a positive display out there for their fans that have been out to all their games this season. Riverhounds on the attack right off the bat and a shot and a goal in seconds. Johan Graf, our player to watch from Francois. Well, the Riverhounds will be wondering what happened. They had the ball in their attacking half, turned it over, and all of a sudden it's down the right flank, played into the middle. Francois runs onto the bouncing ball. Lovely touch there. Bides his time. Doesn't really look up, just puts it in the mix. And why not? Graf is there with his left foot. What a fantastic finish and a fantastic start. Francois with assist number five. Graf with a gorgeous left-footed volley for his eighth goal of the season. What a quick start in the initial minute. First possession for Rochester. And you can see the uh, River Hounds in, in pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It is kick for cancer night here tonight at Highmark Stadium. So a number of the professional teams around the league and around the country, both in college and professionally, participating in the breast cancer awareness campaign, kicking for the cure. And wonderful to see all that involvement by the sports franchises across the multiple sports. Awareness and collecting funds for research. So the Hounds with possession. This is Mike Green. In the air, Forbes to the center of the field looking for Graf. Okai. It's different to see the, the Hounds in the, the pink jerseys instead of their familiar. The Rochester goal is scored by number 12, Johan Yellow. And I love that about Pittsburgh sports teams, too. The, the consistent color code throughout their uh, tremendous uh, franchises here in Pittsburgh. Rochester up early. They do need the four points to clinch the playoff. Graf on the run tonight. Here's Forbes. He is a tremendous facilitator, as is Wall Fall. Francois with the quickness. Brian James. Kim DeFeo. Nice possession here. A lot of movement early, Matt, for Rochester. Being very patient on the ball. They did have an opportunity on the right flank to try and press the action into their attacking third. They came inside with Jordan Dover instead of trying to force the issue down the sideline. You can't fault them at the moment. They have maintained possession very nicely for a significant amount of time. Cross from Cam Demfeo is cleared out by Jamal Jack. We'll be hearing his name mentioned a number of times. What a anchor on the defense. Jack is 6'3", 200 pounder, 149 duels won. 154 clearances. Now Coach Brandt mentioned him as just having a tremendous season. That diving to his right to grab that is uh, Perella. Uh, Forbes a strike. Never really a threat to reach the back of the net there, Matt. I thought Forbes might have looked up and served the ball across the pitch a little bit. Well, Perella's going to send that all the way down to his counter counterpart, Dan Lind. Lynn, 6'4", 195, out of Rochester, homegrown product. The uh, Pittsburgh fans are familiar with Dan. He had 15 shutouts while playing at Pitt. There's Perella covering that one. You can just see Forbes just dragged his right foot over the ball as he pulled the trigger to take the shot. Interesting with Perella, he's been signed very late in the season for the Riverhounds, brought in as cover and replacement in the end as 
coach Brand had to find a way to replace his two goalkeepers that went down with season ending, ending injuries. And Perella from Nor uh, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Ryder University. Jordan Dover serves it in a header save. And again, what a save. Banging into the post. Tremendous work from Perella as Graf flirted with his second goal of the night. Brilliant technique from the goalkeeper down to his left and up so quickly. I'm not sure whether it was him or the post that put the ball out of the goal, but no matter, the goalkeeper recovered beautifully to force the errant shot from Graf. River Hounds having a lot of difficulty defending in their left back position right now. The goal came from that area of the pitch on the service from Francois and Graf almost scored again from a similar service. Here come the Rhinos again. Wall fall. Terrific creator. Oh, Graf thought that uh, Forbes was going to be there, but he never made the cut. And this is Ryan Felix. So Perella, he's made six starts, 12 goals against, 0.556 save percentage, 15 saves. Tied a club high with six saves last Saturday against New York. So Trey Mitchell and Kiesel Broom both had season ending surgery following injury. And so Perella had to come in as cover for those players. And he said that Coach Brand has made him feel very welcome. Goalkeeper coach Gilstrap has also made it very easy for Perella to adjust to what the River Hounds do and the system that they play. Well, so, def go ahead, Matt. Certainly, uh, he, he would want the, the first goal was not his fault. No. He did all that he could, but certainly we've seen some of the best of Perella early in this game as well from that last save he had against Graf. And Coach Brandt, he, you know, he didn't mention, no excuse it, he, he didn't mention the fact that, you know, his team has had multiple key injuries this season, including losing your top two goalkeepers as a, as a reason for not qualifying for the playoffs. But obviously that is a factor. It definitely is a factor and affects the consistency of your team. For Dan Lind, who starred with the Pitt Panthers, he's conceded 11 this season. 20 saves, two clean sheets. And uh, Coach Lilly's been very pleased with Lynn's progression. Coming out to wrap that up is Perella. Because uh, Gomez, who has 10 clean sheets, he was the Golden Glove winner of the USL last season. But uh, now Coach Lilly just very happy to have those two goalkeepers together. Here it is again. Perfect technique there from Graf on the header down into the ground. Yeah, the shot the to go off of the left hand upright but perfect technique on the header perfect technique on the save goalkeeper did very well so difficult to deal with those bouncing headers that's why as coaches we tell players to head it into the turf because it makes it harder for the goalkeeper to make the save but Perella did beautifully with it well good call on the player to watch tonight Matt but graph again Ooh, nearly a shot just off the ball as Rochester continues to pressure you know, with guys like Forbes right there and Fall, but uh, and Francois, good call. He thought that uh, Graf would be critical here tonight. He's already put Rochester up on the board with his eighth goal of the season. And here they come again. Fall, uh, Francois. Rochester, a ton of energy to start this. You can tell they've got a lot on the line here tonight. Francois got in the way there. I think Jordan Dover was the target for the pass down the right flank. In, impressed so far in this early going, Ari, how well the Rhinos are possessing the ball. The Hounds not pressing too far up the pitch, and that's allowing the outside players to get forwards. So we see Dover attacking down the flank again, and that makes life even more difficult for the River Hounds to defend because they're sat, sucking so far back. It's allowing the width. Jamal Jack heads that. Yeah, look at the hustle by Graf. Instant energy. He is relentless in his pressure. And he's had to be. 
Rochester Rhinos, they have, the way Coach Lilly set them up is fairly defensive minded. And I don't mean that as a criticism because they are second in the USL in goals conceded, only 27 on the season. And they've only scored 31 goals, but yet they're sitting in fifth place in the Eastern Conference, yeah. looking to cement their place in the playoffs. And we all know the old adage, defense wins championships. And if they can find a way to get the ball in the back of their net with a little bit more frequency, they'll be a real da really dangerous team. But Graf is a, such an integral part of that because Don't they set back so many players behind the ball. The he's contact. asked to do a tremendous First amount on his own up top. And, and at times, he's done it on his own and scored on his own, which is a testament to the quality of Graf as a player. Yeah, this is not necessarily the team you want to face in the playoffs. As good a defense as they play, here's a foul on this play. But as good as defense as they play, the 12 clean sheets on the season, uh, Coach Lilly confident that they can beat anybody down the stretch and through the playoffs. Served into the box, headed out. Nicely done, and then cleared by Taylor Washington. Who has 85 clearances on the season. will go along with 130 duels, one 95 interceptions for Taylor, who's out of Summers, New York. And the Rhinos, they'll be very comfortable having this one nothing lead because of their defensive prowess. Wall fall, beautiful header to Graf, challenged and taken away by the very physical Jamal Jack. Forbes working against Ben Fitzpatrick. Got to feel good for Dan Lynn to come back here and play professionally in Pittsburgh after starring for the Pitt Panthers. A foul committed there. Fans stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts, Monday to 7 PLR Eastern on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. And what a gorgeous stadium this is. Highmark Stadium opened back in 2013 on the Monongahela River. Just beautiful scenery. Great sports city this is. Riverhounds 4-6-4 four, and four here at home. They're hoping to win their last two games so they can finish at the 500 mark here at Highmark for the first time since 2015. And I know that the Steel Army and, and the Riverhound fans would, would love to have them at least 500 here at home and develop an even stronger home field advantage. The pressure there from Francois forcing the issue along the back line for the Riverhounds. Forbes bends that one in fall looking for Graf. Very efficient so far. Camden Fayo takes a shot. Block fall has it. His shot and a score. Wall fall puts it in the back of the net for his ninth of the season. A case of being in the right place at the right time for Walfall popping up around the penalty spot. Again, the work of Graf keeping the ball alive on the near sideline. Ball falls into Feo. He takes the shot. It's deflected out off of the mid-drift of Agbasamundo. Yeah, really nothing Perella could do about that one. Fall upper right corner. Too good. And like you say, Matt, very fortunate deflection right to wall. Uh, you have to make your own luck and get in the right places, and Wolf Hall does that. It's a nice shot in from Bradley Camden Fayo. I have another crack at number 27's name again. You were coaching me up before the game. Got to make sure I don't say the other end, the, the end at the end. <laughs> You'll have to say it for me, Ari. 
Now the pressure's on. I thought you did a great job, Matt. At Bossa Mude. Now to Syracuse, New York. At Bossa Mude. He was in the right place, but just couldn't. He had just a clearance far enough out of the box, and it fell to full, and he made no mistake putting it in. Yeah, Forbes. Called for a foul there as he wrestled with Ben Fitzpatrick. Far side, Hounds trying to mount an attack here. It's been all Rhinos early. They'd like to get the ball on the foot of Kerr and Herzog and get some things started offensively. There's Corey. 13 goals on the season. Herzog now third all time in Riverhound history with 26 career goals. Okai and Fitzpatrick. That lead ball just to the right is trying to find a seam to Herzog. Forbes with three defenders around him. Felix. Lind with Herzog in pursuit. Good run by Corey. Look at this energy. Great leadership here by the veteran out of Penn State. Corey Herzog was the 13th overall pick back in 2011 by the New York Red Bulls. You see the boat going by. It's a beautiful location here for the stadium. Fans get to look at look the boat traffic as well as the game. And once in a while you see a locomotive uh, go by as well in front of the river. Always something to look at. Just absolutely gorgeous scenic Highmark Stadium. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. Still feel the river hounds need to find a way to press further up the pitch. They're sitting back a little bit. It's allowing the rhinos to have the possession that they want out on the flanks. That's where the problems have come for the river hounds and conceding the two goals. One from the left flank, one from the right flank. Yeah, Pittsburgh at the moment are certainly throughout this first half having trouble matching the energy level of Rochester. Two nil Rhinos Fitzpatrick will throw this in. Coach Lilly. And Mike Green who's at a strong Fans, Ohio. Please join us in thanking Allegheny Health Network for their support of tonight's game for here tonight. tonight. Final Looking to throw it in the down the pitch, but there was nobody moving for him in the attacking half for the Riverhounds. Mike Green is tied for number three in Pittsburgh history with 130 caps. He's tied with Kevin Kerr, a veteran of the Riverhounds. Right, they just miscommunication defensively in the attacking third. There was some opportunity to put some pressure on the back line of the Rhinos. Prattson, I think it was, who was on the ball. And both players for the Riverhounds pulled out of the challenge. And in the end, it was an easy clearance for the defender for the Rhinos. Francois, he set up the goal. Gorgeous assist to Graf. Send it back to Lind with Siobhan Walsh in pursuit. Siobhan's second on the team in both points and goals scored this season. Five goals, 12 points. 
quick check, and I think this is only the eighth game this season that the Rhinos have scored two goals or more, which is pretty incredible considering how many games these teams play in the USL. Yeah. The 29th, 30th match they're playing this evening. Well, you see the uh, the skill that they can put on the field. Is that one errant? But you know they're capable, Matt. You got guys like Fall and Forbes and McGrath and up front. I mean, Francois was injured for the majority of the season, but he definitely provides a a, a burst of speed. Francois is so technically gifted and so creative on the dribble. Times he gets his head down a little bit too much and doesn't find his teammates as consistently as I like, would like. But he certainly is a dangerous player out on that right wing for Rochester. At times he'll pop up, pop up on the left as well. And Forbes is a center midfielder. He'll roam around and he's a difficult player to mark because he'll pop up on the left, pop up on the right, or stay central. A little unfortunate there that the foul went against the Riverhounds. I thought that was a, a fair challenge on the, the header off of the clearance. Yeah. Pittsburgh players were not pleased. Forbes serves it up beautifully at two headers. Farrell had a pretty good look as it skimmed off the head of, I believe, Graf initially. Beautiful ball in by Forbes. That was a fantastic late run there on the back post. It's time for the double yeah, tree. It actually by deflected Hilton. off of Pratzner's head away. first, and then Farrell and came in. Joe, a couple of goals victory. this season. He's an outstanding yeah, defender. Played very well last guess. week against Louisville. Didn't see that ball the way he reacted as that ball skimmed off the head of Pratzner. I don't think Farrell saw that ball at all through the traffic. But I love the run that he made. We got a player down for Rochester, Camden Fayo, holding the right foot. He struggles to get on his feet. Pressure here from Pittsburgh, Mike Green. Jordan Dover, the rookie, on the attack. Ball in, looking for fall. Wall with the left foot. That is wide. Fall scoring the second goal of the night for Rochester. There's Bradley Cam Dumfeo. Limping. It doesn't look like he is going to be able to continue. The defender from Paris, France. Certainly struggling. Blows his whistle to stop the action so that he can get attention. He was actually very smart because he he was sort of half on, half off the pitch. And instead of going off the pitch, he came back on it so that he slow the play down essentially and, and get the attention that he needs from the athletic training staff. Fans. Please join us on Fan Appreciation Day, October 14th. The, first the USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, the featuring some of the game's top talent and rising right stars. Stay up to date with all the latest leagues, news, donors, and information by visiting USLSoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. So back in play, there's Forbes. What a move to his right, but added strep. Nicely done by Kevin Kerr. More than referee Elvis Osmanovic said to Camden Fayo, well, you're, you were off the pitch, you're on the pitch, you're close enough, get off the sidelines so we can start the action and keep the, the play going, please. And that's what happened. There's a nice set for Pittsburgh. Really their first is Devon Okai to the perimeter. Kai and Kerr talking to one another. Kerr felt that ball should have been played out to Taylor Washington on that far sideline a lot earlier than it was. Center of the field, Salto. So 
Kerr is coming more centrally now rather than staying out on the flanks, trying to get involved. Captain trying to get something going for his team. Yeah, that poked away by Graf Forbes leading the Rhinos back the other way. Seems like the communication for the River Hounds is lacking tonight. There should have been a call of man on. Allow Kerr the, the knowledge that he's going to be put under some duress from Graf. We've seen several examples of that from the River Hounds tonight. Well, Pittsburgh was eliminated from the playoffs with that defeat last weekend. It was just their. Uh, that was their first time all season they have dropped two straight. But maybe a little flat if you know you get eliminated from the playoffs. And I can understand you being a little flat and disappointed that essentially your season is only going to last for tonight and, and next week. But you know, you're, you're playing the sport that you love in front of the, the fans that love you and appreciate what you do. Go out and have some fun, but the important thing is also take care of the basics. Something as simple as shouting to your teammate that you got some pressure on and that you need to get rid of the ball is, is probably one of the easiest things you can do on the field. Well, it looks like the Hounds have turned up the intensity, certainly. Uh, Herzog making that run and Kerr communicating. John Walsh complaining that he was tugged his jersey was tugged there it seemed like he overran the ball so there was a good chance that Walsh did have his shirt pulled there by the center backs of Rochester he's trying to play the ball out to this near sideline long ball Herzog was off sides pretty pass negated Control it quite as well as he would have liked. I think he probably realized that he'd strayed. Rochester substitution. So Number Raymond two, Lee Ray will come Lee in for Camden Fayo. Brad Camden. Camden Fayo braved that injury, is certainly in pain, and we hope Bradley's okay. Important piece for the Rhino attack. Raymond Lee, the defender out of. Uh, St. Louis University out of Kansas City comes in. Two to nothing, Rochester. A graph goal in the first minute. And then a wall fall tally as the Rhinos ahead. This is Ray Lee. Pittsburgh battling Solto and a taken by Wall. Graf on the lead between two defenders. Broken up nicely. Way out into the corner to try to. And did he push it to the side? Great hustle by Perella. James. In the corner, Forbes. Rochester has the Hounds spread out nicely. Solto in the right spot. Couldn't clear it. Forbes' strike is deflected high in the air. Colliding there, no call. Francois and Solto go down. Riverhounds defended that fairly well. Then Corey Herzog coming back into the right back position, played a poor pass, put his team under some pressure, and allowed the Rhinos to get the possession back. The communication is starting to get a little bit better. The intensity is starting to get a little bit better for. The River Hounds, that's something that's good to see. I see Victor Solto always in the right spot, Coach Brandt. Tonight, point to mention Victor's solid season. 
Leads Pittsburgh with 62 tackles, has 141 duels, won 65 interceptions. Victor out of Brazil. There he is, number five. Wall fall. That's some terrific uh, defensive position on the basketball court, maybe to take a charge, but. Referee Osmanovic saying, I've seen you do that two or three times, no more. Next time will be a yellow card for Mr. Fall. If it's one of those clumsy challenges again. <laughs> Wall is 6 3 out of Frankfurt, Germany. Does it all for this team. 194 duels won, nine goals now. Seems taller than 6 3, though. You're right. Very lanky. Long arms. Coach Brand has left his seat. He's been standing on the sideline, barking instructions to the River Hounds, and I think his intensity is starting to spread through his team onto the pitch. Pittsburgh just seem to be moving a half a step quicker at the moment than they were to start the match. Yeah, you see the intensity there from Coach Brandt. What a terrific leader he is. Graf giving chase as Okai moves it forward. Trying to get it back, but Wall's long legs were in the way. Francois in the center of the field. Left fullback for Pittsburgh. Thought about going out to make the challenge, but wisely decided against it. Held his position, held the line nicely. Consequently, the Rhinos had to go backwards and were able to win possession back momentarily, although the ball forwards didn't find the foot of Walsh. It swung down there was Agbonsa Mude. See the train moving. Just beyond the field. Yeah, Pittsburgh would like to be getting their momentum going in that direction as well. The River Hounds. I'd be tempted as the driver just pull up and watch <laughs> the game from the tracks. <laughs> Ooh, almost getting through was Raymond Lee, who came off the bench to replace Cam DeFeo, who left with an injury. James. Nobody there near the far post and uh, headed right back to Perella. Washington did well with that. It bounced high on him. Awkward to deal with, but the left fullback did well. Washington has been so valuable to this team throughout the season. 132 duels won, 95 interceptions, 85 clearances. 48 tackles. The games I've watched the Rhinos this season, Ari, it always impresses me how quickly they get players behind the ball. It feels like if you're a member of the opposition, as soon as you win the ball back, you're facing a wall of green shirts. Dangerous there with fall looming. Green did very well with that. That bounced really awkwardly at his feet. It was almost as if he controlled it too well. Spun around and found the, the uh, possession of the ball and was able to get it clear before fall could pounce. Matt Forbes and fall so creative in the center of the field. That is a difficult duel to deal with. Especially his mobile as Forbes is. It's all over the pitch. 
Paul stays a little bit more central, which allows his captain to range around him, if you like. Nice sliding tackle there by Bossamude. Picked up in the air, awkward spin there, kind of got the side of it, a little bit dangerous right in front of the goal, but Agbosa Muda got a, enough of it to clear. We'll set up a corner kick opportunity for the Rhinos. So set piece opportunity with Forbes teeing it up. Well, Francois played it in, it was a difficult ball to deal with. Agbosa Muda did well with it in the end to get it over the crossbar. You'd be thankful if you're a Pittsburgh fan that Francois took an extra touch because he had his teammate number seven, Ryan James, lurking right at the top of the box, but he was unseen. Fans, stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the lake. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts, Mondays at 7 Eastern on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Also, don't forget Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. You can check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Raymond Lee has played well since entering the game for Coach Lilly. Solto directing traffic. As the Hounds try to get something moving forward. Not very lateral at the moment for Pittsburgh. Rhinos have a player advantage in the midfield area, and it's telling at the moment on occasion as the Riverhounds try to go forwards. They don't have that release pass centrally that they could use to find the play further up the pitch on the flank. That was a great lead pass by Kevin Kerr. Pratzner. Uh, good look at Siobhan Walsh. Lind will send it down. Graf. Forbes. Joe Farrell. Whoop, that hit the paw of fall. Almost looked like he wanted to put the goalkeeper gloves on the way he went. His <laughs> arm went out for that one. He's a, maybe a little fortunate that he didn't get that yellow card that the referee warned him about. Well, on a football Saturday, it was a nice pattern right over the middle, and Wall wanted to make the catch, I think, with his hands. It was incomplete, though. <laughs> There's Fault and Forbes. Kerr hustling back. Dover. Darting over, denied nicely done by Taylor Washington. It was a good recovery there from Washington. The overlap on that far sideline from Dover. Francois leaving the ball alone as it was aimed into the attacking third on that right flank. Dover on the overlap. That's that width that the Rhinos are finding. Because they have that presence of Fall and Forbes a little bit higher up the pitch, they're able to get that width further up the pitch. Forbes hits this one low. A shot header and a save. Nicely done off of a difficult deflection. Varela. Uh, puts it up in the night sky. Get a foul out of that as Kerr was interfered with. Let's take a look at this again. James, his strike, Oof. off the head of Farrell. 
straight at the goalkeeper, but that was a really difficult save. Goalkeeper was well placed, but the reaction of Perella to, Perella to get his hands to it and have soft hands, not give up a rebound, was a tremendous job from the keeper. Some of his indoor playing experience coming to the fore there. So the Hounds with another set piece opportunity. Kevin Kerr, who leads this team in assists and minutes played. Bends it beautifully headed a couple of times. And that shot will end up back with Kerr. Got caught off sides there. I like the deep cross on the corner kick. The service was good. Also, Mude was playing it back across the grain, almost found a teammate. So difficult to defend those. Just didn't quite come off for the River Hounds. As we come upon the 42nd minute, two to nothing, Rochester. Kevin Kerr, 2,633 minutes this season, a workhorse for the Hounds. I've been talking about the communication need to, needed to improve for Pittsburgh. And look at Corey Herzog, the forward. He's waving his arms around, yelling at his midfielders as he's trying to put pressure on the back line to force the issue as far as where the pass is going. He's trying to direct his defenders, his midfielders behind him, so they know where he's going, and so that they can then cover up the pass so that perhaps they can force the issue, force the turnover further up the pitch. Okai working towards the near side. They're hoping to get it back to him from Herzog. Kaya, that's the first touch he's had in a long time. He's been very quiet this evening. Okay, another player that Coach Brandt pointed out. A very good, kind of quiet good season from Stefan. 18 clearances, 14 tackles, has a goal. Both he and Soto have been a little bit quiet because of the way the Rhinos have been playing. Francois trying to settle it. Couldn't in time. Great help coming back from Agbonsamude. Francois just couldn't get a hold of it in his stride. And, but Cristiano back to make the steal there. Francois out of Haiti. Played uh, for the Terrapins of Maryland in his collegiate ball. Graf on the run. It's great having the mics around the benches of the coaches because you can hear the instructions being shouted out. This one from Coach Lilly telling the Rhinos, look for your outlets and push up, push up as the balls play forwards. So Forbes, another opportunity from the corner, the third time. Canardo, four assists, 85% passing accuracy, 43 chances created. From the midfielder out of Jamaica. Now that one's going to clear everybody. have had an extra bowl of the breakfast cereal that gives you all the, the power in the legs <laughs> this morning. That already hit it on a heartbeat. That was a very poor service from Forbes. High in the air. Ryan James goes up. Has to go back to the keeper. And Hounds have had difficulty 
getting into their attack. We'll have one minute of stoppage. So just a, over a minute now to, to play in the first half. Ball fall moves so easily. High in the air, Washington. There you see the stoppage time. There will be an additional one minute of stoppage time at the end of the first half. Again, a minimum of one minute stoppage time at the end of the first half. Joe Farrell. Coming out to pressure there is Walsh. Fall dangerous in the center of the field, as is Forbes. Well, Jack, they're trying to step up into the midfield to win the ball, unable to do so. Rochester will try to get a shot off. They only have about 15 seconds. And now see if Perella pushes forward quickly. Riverhounds will be a Maybe little not. bit relieved that the halftime whistle is about to come and the Rhinos will be very satisfied with the first 45 minutes of work. And that should be the end of the half. And there is the whistle. So the Rhinos off to a quick start here tonight. They strike for a Bad goal in the first minute Rochester of play. Two. Add another one by Wall Fall. That was the man with the first goal of the night, Johan Graf. And it's teams that have fallen at that hurdle right at the end of, of matches when they've had results in hand. And what a franchise. The Rhinos trying to make the playoffs for the 21st time in 22 seasons. Right now, Pittsburgh on a five-game winless streak of their own. Uh, they, of course, have been eliminated from playoff contention. After a solid season, battling injuries to both their goalkeepers, Coach Brandt has kept them very competitive throughout. A few points here or there, and, and they're in as well. But so many teams bunched up near that now, fifth through even the twelfth spot, so so little room for air. The Eastern Conference is very tight. Five through eight going down into ninth place. It's all up for grabs. Substitution at halftime by the Riverhounds. Fitzpatrick has left the action, and number thirty-six has come into the fray. Romeo Parks, check and see where he fits into the action tactically for the Riverhounds and Coach Brandt. Well, he's had a strong season, Parks. 131 duels, one, 33 key passes to go along with three goals, three assists. Good size, 6-3 out of Jamaica. I'm gonna be interested tactically to see whether Coach Brandt does make a change. Numerically, the Rhinos have more players in the midfield, or they did in the first half. So with Parks coming in, maybe he'll fit in more centrally to try and help Soto and Okai out, and maybe create the width with the outside backs of Green and Washington. A good start out of the gate here in the second half for the River Hounds. Kevin Kerr with a free kick. Trying to add to his 60 key passes, five assists on the season. Kevin out of England, serves it in towards the far post. Chopped down, nicely done to keep that in play and out in front by Walsh. Well, there were players lurking for the River Hounds, but nobody actually went to the ball. Herzog was at the back post. Bosamude was there closest to the ball, but he never moved. Washington does a nice job. Herzog, can he get a shot off and couldn't settle it? And <laughs> frustrated, sends it hard into the wall. I'm glad he has the skill to keep that one low. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> Those the fans same thing. behind the goal were really panicking for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the anger and 
frustration in his eyes as he swung on that ball. Yeah. Now with Herzog's uh, power in his leg, you don't want to see anything coming off of his foot in your direction while you're eating your popcorn. High in the air, very nicely done. Agba, Agba Samude. Trying to throw it in quickly was Herzog. Now Washington will come up and do it. <laughs> I'm laughing because Herzog tried to take the, ball, the throw in where Washington just went up the field to and the referee had already waved Herzog back. <laughs> Washington's trying to take the same amount of real estate. The referee was having none of it. And Dover will be charged with a foul. He roughed up Corey a bit. Much more positive start to yeah. the second half for the Riverhounds and that's what they needed. When you're playing for pride you have to have that pride in yourselves and your own performance and, and put your your best foot forward. Whether or not they're in the, in the able to get back on terms in this match, we'll have to wait and see. But at the very least, they need to be satisfied with their effort. You see the stature of Parks, 6'3", 195. Looks like he could be playing uh, multiple sports uh, over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. Between him and Basso. Agabasa Mude yeah. and Jamal Jack. Kerr taps it. The strike and off of the rear of Fall. Quickly into Washington. Nice move to his left by Cavan. Fancy pass didn't quite make it to Washington. Jordan Dover waiting to enter this one. Dover's out of Ontario, Canada, UW Green Bay, collegially. Fall in a hurry for Graf. Quick run by Johan, pokes it in front and just kicked away. Beautifully done, a save, goal saving play there by Mike Green. Well, Coach Brandt was screaming at Abbasamude to get back defensively on that throw in. And just as well he did because he was able to force the play a little bit wider from Graf. And then Mike Green just did a fantastic job of adjusting his run defensively to tap that one out of the path of the onrushing attackers. Forbes dribbling through traffic at a strip. Here comes Kerr racing up the far side and knocked away by Ryan, oh, Ryan Felix. Ryan yeah. Felix there. Two good defensive plays. One by Mike Green in the box for the River Hounds. Then Felix on the recovery run there. Now Felix has been so steady. 42 tackles, one. 114 duels, one. Solid performer for the Ryans, the Rhinos. He's got good size too, 6'4". Almost called them the Ryans. They, they could be with Ryan Felix and Ryan James. They're always out there for the Rhinos. Parks has slotted in to central midfield role in partnership yeah, with Okai and Soto. It's giving the Riverhounds more presence in the center midfield area. Seeing Washington and Green trying to get into the attack more for the Riverhounds. Get that presence out wide. Dan Lynn, very composed back there. Always feels comfortable He's in Pittsburgh, right? But those playing at Pitt for the Panthers, 15 shutouts. And unfortunately for the Riverhounds, feeling right at home here at Highmark Stadium. And holding a clean sheet at the moment. Back 
Action at midfield where Forbes distributes. Well, Forbes and Fall are fun to watch. Both players have a lot of imagination on the ball, composure on the ball, able to get their heads up and look around them. And that pass squeezes through dangerously. Fall has it. James leaves for Pratzner. Good chase there by Walsh. And that chip in a little bit too far for Raymond Lee. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. Look at Perella. 6 1 1 90. Francois with a blow by speed. Crowd hooting it up here at Highmark, trying to get their hounds involved and back into this one. Certainly been much more competitive after the opening moments of the game. Right. Rochester, that's a tough team to come back against, Matt. Well, they don't concede many goals. And the Riverhounds would like to wish a happy eighth birthday to us. We've struggled Bush. to score as the Riverhounds have done at times this season. And then you're going up against the second best defense Asaro. in the entire USL and the best in the Eastern Division. It doesn't bode well for you. Francois well covered there. Now Jack was trying to play that with the outside of the right boot up the flank, but miscued, puts it out for the throw in. That cross looking for Graf. Hit away by Green. Off the cross from Francois. That was the connection in the opening minute, which resulted in a goal for Rochester. Ball kid on this near sideline didn't know what to do. The ball had been thrown back to her from the crowd, and she missed it. It went onto the field of play. And <laughs> do I go get it? Do I stay in? What do I do? Forbes headed away nicely. The ball was out of bounds before he even got into the penalty area. Poor service on the corner kick. A couple of bad ones from Forbes. One in the first half, and that one in the second. Sure, those set pieces. You got to deliver the ball where your team can get to it. At this point, it doesn't really matter for the Rhinos, but in closer games, it could be the difference between a goal scoring opportunity and not. Cleared by the Hounds. Again, these two teams battling for the supporters' belt old guard shield here tonight. The Hounds can win it with a victory, as can Rochester. They're tied at 12 points, the five longest tenured franchises in the Eastern Conference against each other. Both Rochester and Pittsburgh are one point ahead of Charleston. And some jersey grabbing, and then that right hand got up high on Farrell. A Farrell's yellow card has been issued Walsh. to the River Hounds at number nine. Well, throughout the first Chevy half, Walsh Rouse. was complaining that he was having his shirt tugged. And clearly he was on that coming together with Farrell, but as often happens, it's the, the second foul that is seen. And on occasion, it was the, the shove from Chevy Walsh to Farrell going to the ground, and hence the yellow card for the retaliation. Hey, there's Coach Lilly screaming at Johan. There's Capelli Sport shirt on. Uh, Taylor Washington said that should have been clean, but a foul here. Free kick upcoming. 
So a set piece opportunity in a good position for the Rhinos. It's a great position. It's close enough for a shot. It also has enough angle on it for the service. A couple of decisions to be made, but Ball is standing over the ball. Looks like he's shaping to serve it to the back post area. And one plus in the wall out there, they might fancy a shot. He has a goal here tonight. Wall, far post and nicely done, but a little ahead of the teammate darting in. That was Ryan Felix. Ordinarily, I'd like to see that as an in-swing or away from the goalkeeper. It landed in about the same area that I would have been aiming for if I had been looking for that in-swing. And the, just the runs were not soon enough for his teammates to get on the end of that. The anticipation wasn't there from the Rhinos. Okay. Sixtieth minute, scoreless here in the second half. Now we have an injured player, uh, it's Francois. They're very uncomfortable at the moment, uh, arguing with the official. And you can take pain. part in voting for tonight's Cleveland Brothers Blue Collar Player of the Game. Go They've been clipped, okay. On Twitter, As that ball went forward, for left his feet. Catch. I was following the ball, so I didn't actually see if there was a collision between the two players, but certainly there's a good chance that that did happen as Okai went for the ball. Getting some fluid in him, you, you hope that game, maybe it's just a cramp, but. Channels. Follow the USL on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for news. Yeah, they're checking that left calf, which would indicate a cramp. Uh, as Cristiano will hobble off. About the USL. It's good to see him moving. Already had one player go out with a foot injury. Camden Feo in the early part of the first half. Was replaced by Raymond Lee for the Rhinos. Coach Oli checking on Francois. Who assisted the early goal by Graf? The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information by visiting www.uslsoccer.com. You can follow them on Twitter at USL. Taping that calf up. Joe Farrell. Here come the Hounds. Washington eludes Pratzner and tried to center it with a cross, but slid off the side of his foot. industry down the flank the near sideline here by Washington he got a little unfortunate the ball stuck underneath his feet as he skipped over the challenge of the defender he never did settle the ball again before he tried to pull the trigger on the cross and it just goes high and wide of Dan Lin's goal Hounds and Walsh trying to get something started. Dover. Jamal Jack, so athletic. His first season here in the USL, played professionally in El Salvador. A season high 13 clearances in, in the game back on the 26th against Bethlehem. 
river hounds have had more presence in the center area of the pitch which has allowed some more freedom for the outside backs to get forwards particularly on this near sideline with washington consequently the rhinos are getting a little bit flatter as outside players of lee on the left and dover on the right are having to have more defensive responsibilities and at times the rhinos will look as though they have five across the back as I say, that Lee is well up into the attacking half for the Rhinos. Yes, he is. Ryan James working. First dog giving chase. Jack and Graf battling back to Perella. I like Ryan James, number seven, for the Rhinos. He allows some freedom for Forbes and Fall to do what they do well. He just anchors the bottom of their midfield triangle so well. James, 140 duels won, 81 interceptions. He just does his job. Looking for a teammate was Mike Green. Okai. Passing ahead, and here comes Parks. Underneath it was hoping to connect with Walsh on the run, but Lind was there. Body language of Herzog says he's a little frustrated with <laughs> things at the moment yeah. and wondering why Lind has been told to put the ball out. So officially now that they will make a substitute for Francois who left the game injured and it is uh, Julian Boucher a Boucher in the game and for Pittsburgh K Banjo will check in Number for Walsh. So Boucher who started two matches four appearances this season for DC United he's out of Syracuse checks in and then Kai K Banjo. Two goals, two assists this season. He had an assist in the Rochester game a couple weeks back. Solto, nice ball into the box, but cleared away. Here's Boucher. Boucher makes things happen. Nice pass to fall. Nobody there on the perimeter. Be surprised Wall passed that out and not lined it up for a shot. Surprised he doesn't didn't lay it into the path of Graf, who was trying to make a diagonal run through the back line there. So if Fall was anticipating Forbes or Dover on that left flank being open. Forbes have come in more centrally. So the ball went over his head and Dover hadn't yet arrived. at the top of the box like that you think the four would either line up the shot or again Graf was trying to make his way through that back line on the diagonal in the end it was just a wasted effort from four and you see players reaction <laughs> Wall tallied the second goal here tonight that was his ninth of the season Graf telling his eighth the two scoring leaders for the Rhinos this season. Yeah. Some Kerr touched the ball much in this second half. He's gone out to the, the right wing for the Riverhounds. Most of the action has been taking place on this near sideline. That foul. Uh, Felix. A holding going on there. Finally, we get a whistle against Pratzner as he was biting up with banjo. Playing the banjo there. Oh, there, there, ha there has to be a comeback, but I can't think of it right now. Like <laughs> <laughs> Bossamude. 
Solto in the center of the field. Long ball to Washington, very nicely done. And the shot sails just high beyond the crossbar. Great look and attempt by Corey Herzog off the beautiful give from Taylor Washington. Beautiful control from Washington, collecting that long diagonal pass. Got stuck underneath his feet a little bit, just puts it into the mix. And Herzog coming in late. Almost puts that one in on target under some duress from James. Forces the shot high and wide. That shows you how dangerous Herzog can be. 13 goals this season for Corey. Name of the team of the week three times this season. He was all league second team last season. And on his way to uh, one of the all league teams this season. 50 key passes. Long ball again. Solto had his jersey grab. That's fall again. And the, yeah, they warned him. And there's the yellow card, Matt. The referee was counting him up again. He forgot the ones from the first half. Certainly full deserved to go into the book for that one, but a little lesson there for youngsters watching is wait for the whistle before you stop playing. Victor Soto was anticipating the whistle. If it hadn't come, he might have been very embarrassed having his pocket picked. <laughs> a little hesitation move by Jack. He connects with Romeo Parks. Jack chased by Hoosier. Issues to Rochester's number 17, Wall Fall. Coach uh, Lilly saying that Dan Lynn's shot stopping has improved a lot over the season. He's very impressed with this young goalkeeper. And what a luxury to have a guy like Lind backing up. The star Gomez. So important for teams to have confidence in the player in net. If you're not sure what they're doing, you, you play a little tighter in front of them because you don't want to make a mistake because you're not sure that they're going to bail you out. But if you have a good keeper back there, it just allows you that more freedom to relax and play your game and consequently make better decisions because you're not so tense. Coach Brandt screaming at his players. Get physical here in the middle of the field. Couple of takedowns. They play on. Boucher to his right. There's the cross headed away. Collected by Fall. Boucher, nice fake going back to his right. This is more of what the first half looked like. Rochester controlling tempo. Well, Mayo Parks won't want to see that one on the highlight reel. <laughs> no. His momentum just kept him going away from the ball there and over he went, head over heels. Here come the Rhinos. Graf off of the give for Forbes. Broken up nicely by Kevin Kerr. Riverhounds need to find a little bit of a spark again. Been playing so well in this second half. Haven't had their rewards for 
their efforts. In the last couple of minutes, it feels like the Rhinos are starting to get back into the ascendancy and it's something the River Hounds cannot afford to have happen. James. And Dover. Hounds would love to get a goal. Get their crowd into it, cut this lead in half. They were shut out last Saturday at New York. Rochester substitution. Number 10. So Wall Fall, his night is finished. As he departs with a goal. And Sofian Turgu will enter the game for the Rhinos. Comes Turgu. Another creative offensive option for the Rhinos. Canardo being held and wrestling for position against Solto. Bring the wolf all out. Might be a little bit of a tactical change from Coach Lilly, not wanting to risk another yellow card for the big number 17. Also save his legs as for the next game as well. Yeah, the game's uh, coming up soon on Tuesday night against Bethlehem on ESPN. The two teams in the playoff Bush. positions. Boucher gets called for that. Yeah, Bethlehem looming there around, what position are they in now? About eighth or are they? As it stands Seven. with the, uh, we'll the league standings updated with games game. in progress, if Fast all results stand, Rochester will stay in As fifth reminder, place. Joe Bethlehem Peter still will be in seventh place. On the field. Banjo. Got pulled from behind by Ryan James as he was trying to unload on that ball. As K gets up to his feet. Played at Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, Romeo Parks will line this up. Bethlehem still played last night against Toronto FC2 and won that game 4-2. Be a great match on ESPN three on Tuesday night. So Parks, who has 25 shots on goal, three goals, three assists on the season. With a good look here, Rochester aligning. And the boot is high. Be tough to get it over Lynn's head with his length. He's listed at 6'4, but got long arms too. Always that challenge on the free kicks. How much power do you put on it? You have to get the ball up and over. You also got to get it down on the other side and with enough power to beat the goalkeeper. And on that occasion, Parks just put too much oomph into the ball. Didn't get enough overspin on the soccer ball to bring it down and challenge the goalkeeper. Two stars here battling Herzog and Farrell. Saw Farrell pretty much neutralize and tie up Luke Spencer of uh, Louisville last Saturday. Played really well in that game against Louisville F FC. This is Turgu. Dover tracks it down, puts it into the corner. Only man there is Washington. We'll let it roll out for a goal kick.
Pittsburgh hoping to mount an attack here. They get Corey Herzog going to have the luck. He did have a shot on goal off of the pass from Washington moments ago. Really calling to his players to maintain their concentration for the last 12 minutes. Forbes leaping over Jack. Boucher gets it back. It's a lovely little touch from Boucher as he received the initial pass there. So subtle with the inside of the right foot, foot to keep things, keep possession of the ball. Beautifully done by the substitute. You hear Coach Lilly shouting out instructions. Farrell. Dover looking for a lane here. In the 80th minute. Steel Army trying to get the Hounds crowd involved. You see him waving flags. Almost feels like the River Hounds. Momentum that they started the second half with has waned a little bit. Dropping deeper and deeper and inviting the pressure forwards from the Rhinos. To find a way to get themselves back on the front foot. Bernardo. Nice passing with Boucher. Boucher on the charge. Washington clearing. A bit fortunate there, Taylor Washington. He got flat footed, watched the ball. The give and go didn't happen in rhythm. So he's able to recover his position. Certainly very guilty of ball watching, but got away with it. Crowd hoping to have something to cheer about about for the Hounds. They've been shut out here. Canardo. Dover sends it in. Salto out of the air clearing. Look at that coach Lilly telling his team to get wider. You hear that, Matt? Yes, I did. <laughs> Here comes Forbes. Into the box, a shot and a save. Perella diving to his left. Well read by Matt. Might have been drifting past his upright, but he wasn't going to make any mistakes to his near post. Goalkeepers hate being beaten, but particularly to their near post. And he corralled it beautifully. It's great to hear all the communication from Coach Lilly to his team, talking about keeping shape, stay connected, get wider, show for the ball. What he means by that is it's not just getting width. You've also got to show at an angle so that you can be seen. And that the ball can be passed to you. You have to be cognizant of what's between you and the player on the ball. If I'm just standing there with the pink shirts of the river hounds between me and the player on the ball, I'm never going to get it. I have to find a way to show on the angle so that the ball can be passed to me. Now, Coach Oli not content up 2 nothing here. In the 83rd minute, he wants perfection and execution out there. He's preparing his team for the playoffs. He's talking both sides of the ball. One, it's the concentration and the shape, which is the defensive side. 
but the movement, the getting wide, showing for the ball, that's the attacking side of the ball that he wants his team to improve on. You see Coach Brown there trying to cheer his players up, trying to get their energy level back to where it was at the early part of this second half. Uh, you can see they came out in the second half, like you say, Matt, with that uh, Coach Brandt's energy, but uh, it has dissipated here late in the game. Dover. There's a shot. And just wide. Good look there. Dover. There's Forbes' attack and his shot on goal. Just see the spin off the outside of the boot. Might have been taking it past the left hand upright, but the goalkeeper did beautifully, getting his hands and then his body behind the ball, making no mistake, ensuring that it didn't go into the back of his net, and then making sure he didn't give up the corner kick as well. And then just previously, we just saw that, that shot, I believe it was Boucher. And the ball was played in by Dover, and then just a very quick flick shot. Shot by Herzog, flies wide. Well set up from Solto. Well, Soto might have been better off taking that one deeper into the box and having a crack with his left leg. Beautiful run from the midfielder. Credit to him, actually. Farrell was tracking the run so well and that negated the angle that Soto might have had for the shot. So in the run of play, I thought I was criticizing him for not taking the effort, but he actually did what, the only thing that he could, trying to find Herzog, because the defense of Farrell was so good. Yeah, beautifully done, set up by Kay Banjo. Terrific touch from Solto. Long ball on the run, Herzog amongst green jerseys. And it'll be a corner kick opportunity for the Hounds and Romeo Parks. And Coach Lilly calling to his team to keep shape, that they know the ball's going long. They got caught out by Richmond a couple of weeks back on a long ball clearance from the goalkeeper, and that ended up being the game winner for Richmond kickers. Dangerous on the counter. Graf giving chase. Uh, Farrell doing an excellent job on that corner kick to get up there and head it away. And we talked to Coach Lilly prior to last week's game against Louisville, and he talked about that goal from Richmond, and he was not happy with his defenders, wondering what they were playing at, not communicating, and you can hear him tonight making sure that they keep that shape, keep together. And as that ball's play long, Ari, you always want to have the, the four defenders, three defenders drop as a unit. And then once you've judged the flight of the ball, you communicate so that one player will then challenge for the, the long ball. And then the team around him will drop and keep the play in front of them. You don't want all three players going for the same ball. There's Forbes. Pushing it to the perimeter. Just a few minutes remain here. Rochester comfortably in the lead. The goal in the first minute of play, and then Wall Fall added one after Graf's goal in the first half. Uh, no scoring since early in the first half for either team now. Boucher with space. And whistle blows. Forbes was offside as the flick pass came from Boucher. Almost felt like the Rhinos were toying with the River Hounds there. Felt like they could have played that ball into the box at any given point. They chose never to do so, and in the end, Sustained good pressure and possession came for now because of the mistimed run from Forbes. A 
Here come the Hounds hoping to give their terrific fans something to cheer about but. Taken away by Ryan James. It's definitely one of the uh, stadiums around the USL. There's quite a few of them, but you, you definitely want to love to visit and take a game in here at Highmark. And so many great facilities, fantastic sight lines. Lead from Forbes to Graff. He just couldn't settle it. See the Steel Army banners there in the back of the net. Great fan base here at Highmark Stadium. So Dan Lind, about a minute. Left, maybe a little stoppage time away from his third clean sheet of the season. And you combine that with 10 from Tomas Gomez. And that's one of the, the scary features about this team having to face them in the playoffs. Here's Turgu on the run into the box with the left foot. Can't connect with Graf. And Jamal Jack set up in the right spot. Turgu. There'll be two minutes of stoppage at Turgu and Graf. A couple of good opportunities there, Matt. Well, good opportunities. Jamal Jacks played fairly well in the center part of the Riverhounds defense in partnership with Bossamudo. There will be two minutes stoppage time at the end of the second half. Here's the half. two minutes up. There will be. Additional two minutes of stoppage on the time board. at the end of the second half. Pittsburgh four six and four here at home. Rochester came in four four and six on the road. Here come the Hounds. Free kick up coming, so it appears that the. Rochester Rhinos will grab the supporters built old guard shield with this win. That was on the line tonight. These two teams are the five longest tenured franchises in the Eastern Conference battling for the old guard shield. And they were both in the lead with 12 points. Rochester of Boucher. Either content just to run clock or will Forbes advance? About 30 seconds remain. The lead for Boucher. High in the air and nearly into the river. Togu was lurking, ready for the pullback that never came from Boucher. Poor choice from number 27. Should have pulled that ball back. His teammate was in support, in position to have a, an opportunity on frame. And now you're leading 2 nothing up with the final whistle to come, but you make good choices in and around the penalty box. And that whistle should be coming any second now as Rochester kills time. And there it is. Final score, Rochester two. So two to nothing. The There's the classy Tonight's Coach Brandt. Congratulating Kratzner and the Rhinos on their uh, impressive victory here tonight. Two goals early on in this one, and then Rochester played it out, held on, and pick up another clean sheet. Their 13th of the season today is Dan Lane.